Hello folks. So now there's only one thing left to add into this platformer and that's actual platforms. So let's just get straight into that. I'm going to create platforms in more or less the same ways I did with everything else. So if we come down into where I create the world class, uh, so right about here I've got class world and then within here I've got the different tile checks that I'm doing. So if you remember I've got I've gone from three to six so I actually missed out four and five and that's my two platforms. So one goes left and right and the other goes up and down. But I'm going to create them in kind of the same way as I have with the enemies, the lava, the coins, and the exit. I'll use a separate class for these. So if we come down here, we've got our enemies. Uh, and I suppose I'm going to keep this order here. So I had enemy at number three and then lava at number six. So between enemy and lava is where I will have my platforms. So I've got my enemy class and my lava class. So between them, I will add platform. So let's, in fact, because it's going to be more or less the same kind as the rest of them, I'll copy these first few lines from Lava uh, because this is very repetitive code now. So class platform. And this part stays because it's going to be a child class of Pygames sprite class. We keep that same init for now. Uh, this stays as well. And then I just need to change the image. So this is just going to change to platform.png. Okay, so now that that's loaded, I need to make sure that I scale it. So I say self.image equals pygame.transform.scale and then I'm scaling that image whoops uh, and then the x and a y sizes so in the x direction the platform is going to be the same size or the same width as a regular size tile so we'll say tile size and for the y it's going to be half the height of a regular tile so we'll say tile size divided by two and just make sure to close the bracket there so that's the image and then self.rect equals self.image.get underscore rect. So that will give us the rectangle from that platform. And just like the rest of them, rect.x equals x. And we copy this down. So this should all be becoming quite familiar by now. So this just sets the, port, the x and y coordinates that I feed in at the arguments when I create the instance, and it positions the platform rectangle based around that. So that's enough to create the instance of the, oh, sorry, that's enough to create the platform class. I'll just run the code to make sure there's no errors. No, everything's fine. So I'll do what I've done with the rest of the classes. I'll scroll down to the bottom where I've got all my groups. And between blob and lava, so between my enemy and lava groups, just to keep the same order continuing, I'll say platform underscore group. And it's going to be pygame.sprite.group. So that will create my individual empty platform group. Uh, and now if I keep scrolling down into my main game loop, I want to make sure that I'm updating them and drawing them onto the screen. So in, again, in between blob and lava here, we'll say platform underscore group dot draw onto the screen. So for now, that's not actually going to put anything on because I haven't created any instances of it. But let's just run the code to make sure there's no errors and it all runs OK. All right, so now let's go and create some instances of this. If I scroll all the way back up to my world class, so here I'm creating uh, my enemies at tile equals three. So just below that, I can add if tile equals four, and then I'll just say platform equals platform class. And then just with the rest of them, as I've done so far, I put an X and a Y coordinate. So the X coordinate here is going to be, actually, I think I can just copy this one down, column, column count times tile size. And then for the Y coordinate, I can just say row count times tile size. So that's gonna position my platforms in the right place, and then I need to make sure that I add them to the group. So platform underscore group dot add platform. So this is fine, that creates one type of platform, but I'm gonna have platforms that move left and right as well as up and down. I will differentiate between them as I go, but for now I'm just gonna code them in uh, and they're pretty much gonna be the same to start with. So if tile equals five, well then I can just copy this code down and this will also create for the time being the exact same platform. They don't really have any of the functionality built in just yet. So let us run, well, actually, before I run this code, I need to change the level because level zero doesn't have any platforms anyway. So I scroll all the way back up. Uh, I believe the first level where I used platforms was level three. So we changed that. Uh, and I'm just going to mute the music for now, just so it doesn't keep playing. So I'll just comment out this section here. Okay, so if I start... There we go. So that's the platforms there. At the moment, of course, there's no collision with the platforms and they're not actually moving up and down. But so this one is meant to move up and down. This one's meant to move left and right. So how do I add that in? Well, 
their movement is more or less the same as what I've done with the enemies, right? The enemies move left and right. So if I come back down to how I've done my enemies class as a reminder, basically what I had was a move direction and then a move counter. And then I had this counter that increased up to 50 uh, and essentially I just changed the X coordinate based on that move direction. So initially started off positive, the enemies would move to the right and then when it goes past a certain point, I just flipped move direction in the opposite, well, in the opposite direction. So it moved right, then moved left and then back and so forth. So I can just do the exact same thing now for my platforms. So I need to make sure that in here, I add a couple more in, uh, sections to my init. So the first two are going to be the same as what I've done for the enemy class, which is self.move underscore counter equals zero. And note, even though I'm using the same variable, because these are specific to the classes, it's not going to cause any clashes. So this will only apply to any instances of a platform class. And this one up here and this one here are only going to apply to any instances of the enemy class. So in this case, you don't really have to worry about using the same variables, just like I've done with rectangles and X and Y coordinates. They are specific only to the instance or the class that you're putting them into. So we have the move counter and then we have move direction. So we just start off with one and then this will be flipping back and forth over time. So the other thing I needed to add was an update function or update method because the built-in update method isn't going to have any of this functionality. So I can pretty much just copy down what I did for the enemy class because the movement is going to be handled in pretty much the same way. So I'm going to be changing the either the X and the Y coordinate based on the move direction. Then I'm going to increase the move counter and then when the move counter gets above a certain value, which I've chosen to be 50, then I flip the move direction and I flip the move counter. So at the moment, because I've put this based on just rectangle position X being increased, it means that all the platforms are going to be moving left and right. I will differentiate between that in a second, but I just want to get things working in an order. So now that I've added this in, I can move down into my main game loop and just make sure that I've actually called that update method. So I should have it here where if game over equals zero, so basically as long as the game is running, I'm updating the enemies. So now I can just do the exact same thing for the platforms. I'll say platform group dot update. And if I run this code now, all the platforms are now moving left and right. So that's not completely correct because these platforms should be moving up and down instead of left and right, but it's getting there. So how do I differentiate between them? I mean, what I could have done, if you remember up in here, I've got my if tile equals four and if tile equals five, I make the same class. So what I could have done is made two different platform classes. I could have made a platform uh, horizontal and a platform vertical and then creating them separately that way. But I think by keeping them all in the same class, it just keeps things a little bit tidier. All I need to do to differentiate between them is just to add an extra couple of arguments. So in the init uh, method for the platform class, I'm going to add a couple more here. So the ones I want are move X and move Y. And this is, one, this is one, what is going to determine which direction these platforms are actually going in. So we'll say self.move underscore X equals move underscore X. And then copy this down and say move underscore y equals move underscore y. Uh, and I've kind of done this the wrong way around because really I should put them into the arguments uh, previously. So here I'll add in move x and move underscore y. So the idea now is that I can feed either a move x or a move y value when I create an instance of these platforms. And then depending on which one of these is a zero or a one, the update method will take that and move the platform accordingly. So now that I've got extra arguments here, I need to make sure that I'm putting in the correct number of them when I create an instance, because I used to only have an X and Y coordinate. Now I need a move X and a move Y. So let's go back up to where I'm creating these platforms within my world class. So I've got if tile equals four, I'll create platforms and tile equals five, I create platforms. So let's make four the horizontal platforms. So that means that at the end, I need to add a couple more arguments. So the first argument would move X. Well, that would be a one because they are moving in the X direction. Move Y would be a zero because these platforms only move left and right and not up and down. And here I can do the opposite. So my tile equals five are also basically like elevators. So they move, they don't move in the X direction. Therefore this is zero, but they do move in the Y direction. So that's one. If you put both of these to one, then I suppose what would happen is the tiles or the platforms would kind of move diagonally, but I don't really have that in this game. So if we come down to where I've got my updates 
Uh, actually, I'm just going to run the code again, make sure there's no errors along the way. Platforms will still only be moving left and right, but everything in the background is working okay. It's accepting the fact that I've added these extra arguments, uh, and the instances of platforms do now have these. It's just they're not being utilized in the update method. So that's the only thing left to add now. And so I think adding them in is kind of straightforward. At the moment, what I'm saying is self rec dot x, i.e. the x coordinate of the platform, should increase by the move direction. I can do the exact same thing. So copy this down, add it below, and do the exact same thing for the y coordinate. So I'm basically saying that both x and y are going to be increasing by the move direction. But move direction can then be manipulated by move x and move y. So if I just multiply this top line by self.move x, and then this bottom line by self.move y, what this is basically saying is that all of the platforms are going to be, regardless of which direction I want them to move in, all of them are going to be running through this code here, and their x and y coordinates are going to be adjusted. However, because for the vertical platforms, I'm supplying a 1 for move y and a 0 for move x, well, that means that the vertical ones, their rec.x value is going to be increasing by move direction multiplied by 0, i.e. it's not going to change. It's their y coordinate that's going to increase because this is set to 1. And then for the horizontal platforms, the opposite is true. So by doing it this way, it just means I save on a lot of code on adding an extra class for platforms. I can basically just differentiate between the two of them just by passing in this move x and move y argument. So let's try this code now. And there we go. The platforms are working. I've got them moving up and down, and these ones are moving left and right exactly as intended. So that's pretty much it. Platforms are now working. The only thing left to add is collision, and I'm going to do that in a separate video. So if you found this video useful, then please leave a like, and if you'd like to stay up to date with these, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.